Hi, it's good to be with you once again. I hope that you are keeping well and enjoying this beautiful sunshine that we're having at the moment and managing to keep cool. This coming Sunday, I hope you're planning something special because it's Father's Day. Now, it may be a bit different to what you normally do, but I'm sure that you will be treating uh, your dads and those close to you to something special, or hopefully you will. Father's Day uh, originated in America um, when a man, uh, William Jackson Smart, uh, when his daughter decided that she wanted to mark somehow her father. He had brought six children up on his own after his wife died in childbirth. And on, on Mothering Sunday, she was in church and she heard the, the minister talking about mums and she wanted then and there to find some way of saying thank you to dads uh, as well. And out of that came this tradition of Father's Day, a time when we can stop and think about those who are our fathers or act as father figures within our daily lives. And above all, and similar to Mother's Day, really, what we're marking is that unconditional love that a parent has for their child. That love that no matter what is, is constantly there. Jesus told many parables and one of the parables that he told was of a father who had two sons. Now, these two sons, they were worked on their father's farm. And then the younger son, when he reached 18, he went to his dad and he said, Dad, can I please have my inheritance? Because I want to enjoy it while I'm young and free. Dad was a bit mm, not sure about that, but said, OK. And because he loved his son. So he gave his youngest son his inheritance. As soon as he got it, his, dad, his son went, bye, dad, and went off traveling the world, living a life of luxury. He parted all night. He had the, stayed in the best ha house with a swimming pool and whatever else you can imagine. He had a smart sports car and he wasn't short of friends. Loads of people wanted to come and see him and, and be with him and share in the, in, enjoy the parties that he threw because they were legendary. But slowly, the money started to run out. So he wasn't able to afford the luxury car anymore. And so it was taken away. The, um, he wasn't able to throw big parties. So his friends left him because they weren't really his friends anyway. He fell, he stopped paying his rent. And so he's thrown out onto the street. He had nowhere to live, no money, no nothing. Tired, hungry. He started rummaging through the bins, trying to find something to eat, something someone else had thrown out. People were rude to him, abused him. They shouted at him and hit him. One day when he was walking through, rummaging through the bins just to find a half-eaten McDonald's or pizza or something to satisfy his hunger, his mind 
went back to home and he thought about his dad and his brother and the life that he had there. He thought about the people who worked on his father's farm and how his dad looked after them. And he decided then and there, he would put his pride behind him and go back home. He would go back and say to dad, dad, I'm sorry. Dad, can I work for you? And so he did, he started that long journey home. Back on the farm every day, dad went to the end of the road and stared out to see if his son was coming home. He missed his son. He worried about his son. He wanted to know that he was safe and well. Then one day, one day in the distance, he saw a figure coming up the road and he knew, he knew there and then that it was his son coming home. And so he started to run and he ran as fast as he can. And he, when, they, when he got to his son, he grabbed him in both arms and gave him the most amazing hug. It was wonderful. It was amazing. And he said, my son, I'm so happy to have you home. The son said, dad, I'm really sorry. I've messed up. I made a mistake. And dad said, it's fine. I'm just glad you're home. You're safe and well. Come on, let's get you some clean clothes, a nice shower and let's celebrate. And so they walked back up to their house, to the farm together, arm in arm. Dad called some of the servants and said, come on, we're gonna throw a party tonight. A great big party because my son who thought who I had lost has returned and I want to celebrate. And so they did. The brother wasn't too keen on the idea. He came at home to find all the preparations going on for this amazing party. And he said, he said to one of the servants, what's going on? And they said, well, your brother's come home. Your brother's come home and your dad is celebrating. He's so happy. They hold the son, he wasn't. And dad came out to him and said, what's the matter? And he said, well, dad, I've been here day and night working my ha hands to the bone for us. I've done what you wanted me to do. And then my worthless brother, he went off and spent everything and you're throwing him a party. And his dad said, son, I love you. I love you so, so much. And I always will. But your brother, I thought I'd lost. But has come home and I love him too. I love each of you equally, unconditionally. So come on, come and celebrate that your brother has come home, that we're a family once again. And so they did. Now I wonder, I wonder what you like best about that story. I wonder what you think is the most important part of that story. I wonder how you would have felt as the younger brother. I wonder how dad felt. And I wonder how the older brother felt. I'm sure there are lots of emotions going on in that story for all those involved. 
But for me, the most important part of that story is that welcome, that welcome the younger son re received from his father when he came home. He knew he'd made a mistake. His dad didn't care. His dad loved him so much that he just welcomed him home. And that's, to me, what unconditional love is. The dad didn't stop loving his son. Our parents don't stop loving us. They are always loving us. And yes, we make mistakes and sometimes they make mistakes, but they never stop loving us. And God is the ultimate parent. He is perfect. And God's love is definitely unconditional. And he loves us no matter what. So I wonder, I wonder how you can show that unconditional love this week to your family, to your friends, and to those you don't get on with so much. And think about those who show love, unconditional love to you, whether they be parents or, or, or other members of your family, or whether they be someone else. How does that make you feel? As we think about those who show us unconditional love, let's be quiet and still. Loving God, we thank you for the unconditional love of those around us whether that be our parents, our family, or someone else. We thank you for the joy and for the security that it gives us. And we thank you for your unconditional love that helps us to always know that we are valued, that we are important. Help us to always love one another unconditionally. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day on Sunday for Father's Day and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.